Gatlinburg, next door to Smoky Mountain National Park, has become a thriving, very busy tourist attraction. You might be surprised then that just off the main road is a quiet, scenic little place called Aramont. Now more than a century old, it started as a modest settlement school and grew into a nationally renowned arts and crafts center of learning. We're going to take you there. It began life as a settlement school in 1912 a philanthropic endeavor of Phi Beta Phi Women's Fraternity with the goal of bringing basic education and health care to a remote mountain region. Soon the founders discovered and helped develop a market for the weavings, baskets, and other handicraft items made by local residents. After World War II, Aramont opened its doors to the public for week-long workshops, a tradition that's continued and grown. Bill May was a professional stained glass artist before he was hired as executive director. For me, it's beyond just learning art, just learning craft. It's really about learning to express yourself in a creative way. Students arrive from around the nation to this picturesque campus for weekend, one week or two week workshops. Immersed in a creative environment, many students describe as, well, magic. In the more than 130 class offerings, you can work in wood, clay, textiles, metal, and much more. But it wouldn't be a nationally recognized arts and crafts oasis without top-notch teachers to lead the way. All we can do is try to find people that we know are great artists, we know they do great work, we know they have skills. But more importantly, they have to be people who are at a point in their lives, a point in their career, that they're ready to share and give back. We first dropped in on this class involving figurative sculpting with clay, where students build life-size forms with some psychological components. Kurt LaCrosse from Alla, Michigan is the instructor. Monday morning, we started putting our armatures together and we managed to put this all together in five days. I'm and, impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. This student, Neil Witt, is a retired lawyer from Birmingham, Alabama, who found his artistic calling in this kind of expression. You couldn't learn this much in a year that we learned in a week just from sharing ideas with other classmates and and learning some new techniques from, from uh, good instructors. Now, who is this guy here? This guy is the whiskey's not working anymore. He's, uh, my work tends to be sort of whimsical in nature, and uh, so, you know, I try to make a serious piece, but by the end, it's uh, got a funny looking face and a hopefully humorous name. Erin Affinson is an associate professor of art at MTSU. She teaches this class centered around the use of encaustic paint. And this is clarified beeswax, um, bleached, and uh, natural resin called Damar resin. Uh, and then, so this is the paint without any pigment in it. And we've been using a lot of this in the collage class. And this is, you put pigment to it, and then you have these bars of paint. They kind of look like crayons, but you can't write with them, and you have to melt them to work with them. A lot of people really like to use encaustic um, with layering. Um, you can get a lot of atmosphere with it and just layering the paint and scraping back down and revealing. Um, you can incise into it, you can draw on top of it, you can mix other oil-based media with it. And then what I really like to do is incorporate paper with it. So this class is designed around incorporating paper and collage. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole nother world. It's, it, um, my wife really likes it after I've been here when I come home because I'm just uh, I'm fired up for several months. In this newer class, you might get the idea students are distracted by their cell phones. Well, you see, it's all about using iPhones and Androids to shoot and edit professional style photographs. The instructor, Joshua White, used his phone to shoot these insects for National Geographic. Even if I was shooting with my SLR, there wouldn't really be a difference in the print because of the size that I print them. After the shoot, it's all about the apps. It's really kind of crazy how quickly in, uh, the apps have evolved and how powerful they've gotten. Some of the ways in which they work on photographs are more powerful than what I can do on my computer, or not more powerful, but maybe more intuitive. 
Now in this non-digital, more primal environment, Laura McAdams Selden teaches a metal fabricating class that involves MIG welding, bending, and grinding steel tubing. So this is my first time teaching here, and it's just, you're just surrounded by creativity, and you're surrounded by people that want to be here and want to learn something new. You're sometimes, you know, you're surrounded by people that have really stressful day jobs and they just want to do something creative for a week. You know, you're surrounded by students that are in grad school that are trying to learn something completely new with no pressure of grades or politics or any of that. Aramont augments its creative mission with community outreach projects and this artist in residence program that allows emerging artists to spend a year here working on new bodies of work. The school's galleries offer the public a chance to experience changing exhibitions, all of professional works that complement and support the workshops. From a rustic settlement school to a nationally respected epicenter of arts and crafts, Aramont's mission has always been enriching lives. It's a mission that's now in its second hundred years. You know, people who are able to create don't just consume. They don't, they realize that meaning for your life is not necessarily something you buy, that happiness is not necessarily something you find. In many ways it's something you create and I think being here, being involved in the arts is a way to be creative.